Hey guys, what's up? It's me, People25. Uh, how you guys doing? Uh, sorry about the unorthodox intro. I kind of panicked because I was on three slides ago to a failed recording because my dog decided to be uh, a, a dork and bark out the window. So if you saw me panically quickly changing slides and almost adding a slide before this video started, before you heard me, uh, congratulations, you officially caught a minor blooper on tape. Don't take too much pride in that one. But today, I am here with a recent, or a synopsis from a recent trip I took out to Boston. I'm just saying New England because I kind of travel to other places as well. I did go to two parks while I was at it. But the whole concept of this thing is that, well, I'm back to a synopsis. It's the first and only long-winded trip I'll probably take this year, meaning over a weekend stay or like four-day weekend thing. Uh, it's where, it's probably my only multi-park stint as well. And, well, it was just really fun, of course. I just got back from Boston uh, from a plane um, like four or five hours ago, so the thoughts here are pretty fresh. I'm not going to talk about the minor details, some of the other things I did there, like some of the technological or historical institutes over there. I didn't, I did those, but I'm not going to talk about them since you're here for the roller coasters and amusement parks. You're here for that. You're, if you're here at all, congratulations as well. Uh, I'm not going to also include some of the personal stuff because it's personal. Uh, <laughs> I did ma manage to make uh, a trip to Six Flags New England and Canada Lake, which was a new park for me. The first new park I'd been to since, God, it's it's been a while since I, Magic Mountain. It was, my, it was my first new park since Magic Mountain, and my first independently owned park since Nickelodeon Universe, if Nickelodeon Universe is considered independent. If not, then maybe Hershey? Bush Gardens? Tampa? It's not like your non-Six Flags Cedar Fair park. It's, I don't know. <laughs> it can't be like one of the few parks I've also been to that's actually like not owned by a corporation. It's it's owned by a couple families. And you probably don't hear about it a lot. And that's kind of for a reason. Uh, I'm going to summarize each of the parks basic, in a basic level with a text on screen if you just want to skim through. But if you want to listen to me speak in whatever unorthodox fashion I decided to do it in, uh, you're going to hear me for a few minutes on each park. Uh, give my thoughts about what I did, how I did it, if I made some content about that already. Um... Uh, I might re reassess some of my thoughts. Like, I know I made a Wicked Cyclone review earlier, like, last year. And it was one of my first reviews as well, other than, like, X-Light and Wizard. And I have some thoughts on that after writing it again. So, Six Flags New England. Uh, got there at opening. No problems there. Got Getting in was quick. I did get... My, the only new credit that I got there was Joker, because I was there in 2016. And uh, it was then Splash Waterfalls, and that was gone. And, well, it's just the fact that mm, it's a new credit. I, I, was, I went on it first, so I can just, it was a walk-on. I think I got purple side, though, so I was a little screwed off there. Um, afterwards, went to Batman, which wrote it twice because, it, like, I had a pretty short line all day. Uh, it was pretty, just pretty dead in the first place, other than, like, school trips, because uh, it was a Wednesday and cloudy when I went. Uh, went on Riddler Revenge afterward. My it was a previously mind eraser, but they repainted it and gave it new trains uh, for this year, and just it's still kind of it hasn't changed all too much. Just no head banging. I got a new Harley Quinn Spin Sanity, the giant discovery, and I was blown away at how how great it was. It was a great flat ride. I still think I prefer Max Air because of some of the intensity on it. The thing does take a while to start up, but once you're going, you're really off. I think I prefer those to Sky, or Sky Screaming Swings, not Sky Screamers, Screaming Swings. I got a Superman once, and I do say, I will attest, that it is still overrated as all hell. I told you in my overrated video earlier this year that I'd give it another shot, but nope, it's still overrated. The restraints are still bulky, the ride's shaky, and the airtime is nowhere near as good as it could be. Maybe it may just be a thing of I don't know how to 100% ride the thing, but I don't know how with you with lap bars that bad. It's a Skyrush syndrome. You're used to it if you're a local, but if you're not, God, it's awful. And then of course Gauntlet is still trash. It's it's aggressive, but it's trash because it hurts. And then Wicked Cyclone I went on twice. Flashback was down for the day. Voluntarily skipped Pandemonium due to the inefficient line, uh, and just the fact that it's a Pandemonium clone. I can go to St. Louis if I really want to ride one of those. Uh, missed Goliath yet again for extensive maintenance. Um, I didn't see it testing all day while I was in the line. I didn't see it testing all day when I was in any other part of the park. So I just, I just took, I just bit the bullet and realized I'm probably never going to be able to ride it because they're going to scrap it in the next five years. I bet. 
because it just doesn't work. It's awful. And the coaster's more or less the same as back in 2016. I don't really have any major changes. I do realize now that Wicked Cyclone isn't as good as I made it out to be. It's still a fantastic ride. And I did get to ride it in the very front and very back seats. So it's just it is a quite a good ride still. I just think that uh, I'm a little less liking it because of some pacing issues. The kind of, the ride just goes like you drop, go into overbank, have an airtime hill, a zero G stall, and then the rest afterward. After that zero G stall, you kill so much momentum and you like start you start like, you notice there's a definite whip in the front and back, like a, a like a drag. You just kind of think the whole thing just loses some its pace. It has some pacing issues. We knew towards the end of the ride it slowed down. I knew that up front. But it started getting, like, it was, like, less, it was warmer back in 2016 when I went. It was only, like, 70, 80 degrees when I went and cloudy. And I, I also let it, had adequate time to warm up. I rode it again, also, I rode it twice, one in, right about noon and one right about, like, just before I left at 3.34 o'clock. And, and I just say I was, I was still, I, both those times I had very similar thoughts. But I still love the thing. It's still fantastic. Um, Yeah. So, New England there, it's good stuff. I would happily go to the park again. I don't have really any major quarrels with this park. I didn't really have a bad stay, but it wasn't a really good stay. Um, it was just fun. It was just a fun place to be. The lines were short all day as well. I only had to wait like 10 minutes for Harley Quinn. So, that was fun. I, only, I think it was like three cycles I had to wait. Because so, it thinks 40 things a disc. And then moving on to the park that I really made this video to talk about was Canopy Lake. The first new park that I've been to in a long while. I think since Magic Mountain was, my, was the last new park that I went to. Um, I thought you, you thought I'd be able to go to a new park by now, but I went to Steel Vent instead. So it felt nice, especially with another year of age comes another year of cynicism. Or another number to my cynicism stacks. It just... I was able to critically analyze Canopy, Canopy Lake, and I like it. It's quaint, homely, lots of charm, good landscaping. The layout's a little iffy, but it's because it's, it's like a historical site. It was originally a trolley park in the 1880s, 1890s, so it's pretty old. Uh, it's been around for quite a while as a trolley park and now converted theme park. Um, I mean, I did get two rides in Yankee Cannonball. It was the first thing and last thing I did, Yankee Cannonball. Um, Untamed, I only did once. Canopy Corkscrew, I only did once. They do have a rotor, one of those rides where you get stuck to the wall vertically. The floor drops out from under you, and you're just you're carried along by centripetal force. It's called Turkish Twist, and I did that once. I've never been on a rotor before. I've only been on one of, like one of those Hus UFOs, which is like you're off at like the 45 degree angle going up a wall. So it's not as good as this. This was an insane ride, Turkish Twist, and it was only a one cycle wait. So it was worth it. Just don't do it repeatedly because you may lose your lunch. I felt a little nauseous coming off of it due to three G's of sustained, well, G-force in my face. I looked very red. I looked very flushed after riding it because it was just that forceful. Uh, Yankee Cannonball is definitely the star attraction here, though. It's It looks like just an old wooden coaster. It's not. It's small. It's not very large. But it is... Very deceivingly smooth. It has some good moments of airtime. Better if you're in the back. Uh, there's not really a bad seat on it. And the seats are first come, first serve. So if you get the front of the line, you can choose whatever row you want. If you want row, if you want front row, go for it. If you want back row, go for it. If you want row seven, go for it. Just go ham. It's first come, first serve. I also did find a 20 in the queue of Yankee Cannonball, so that went towards my lunch. Um, water park expansion, uh, there was news back in, like, January, February of a, of a water park expansion, including, like, a lazy river, wave pool, and new tube slide complex that was supposed to open this year, and that is way behind schedule. Wish I could have gotten a bit of footage of the thing, but I don't think it would have been worth putting up to YouTube, so, because I think it would have been better had I, if I had a Twitter and put it up there, which I don't, and I'm not sure if I should get one. Uh, there are a couple other things to note as well. There was free parking. Parking was absolutely free. The lot's kind of small, and it did get full towards the end of the day because of a lot of people getting out of off of school, off work, and then just coming here. Uh, $40 tickets, so it's pretty affordable. The food prices are less than an average theme park, as expected. I stayed for about three and a half hours, and including time to eat. And they also, for those who are geeks, nerds, or vintage uh, thrill seekers, 
they have a fully functional pinball arcade. Like, there is a large, like, retro room. It's got 60s, 70s, 80s. Like, you got your old last century colors with vintage pinball machines. You got some all the way back from the 50s. You got some of the line drives from the 20s and 30s. You've got your classic cult favorite pinball machines like your Adams Family, your Roller Coaster Tycoon, your all sorts of popular movies from the 80s and 90s with retrofitted with a couple new modern bits and gadgets. And it's a quarter thing as well, so it's not like they're going to charge you two bucks to play it. No, it's 50 cents or a dollar, depending on which one you play. Because it's, it's literally, they just took a pinball machine or a bunch of them from the 80s and 90s and put it here today. And, of course, you don't win anything off of it because it's not, you just go for the highest score because that's how pinball works. I was very impressed that it had that. When I saw it, I was like, wait, am I seeing this correctly? And then I saw it, and I was just like, yes. Got to play a few rounds, I believe. I chose to do Monopoly, and I did a co-op with my partner with uh, on the Adams Family one. That he told me it was good back from when he was back in his college days. So, Canopy Lake, I was very impressed with. Uh, Untamed and Cor Canopy Corkscrew, the less said about those, the better. I was disappointed with Untamed. I thought it'd be the best ride there, and I was disappointed. And Canopy Corkscrew is what I expected. So, yeah. So, if you made it to the end of the video, congratulations! We have a bonus segment! That's a lot of text. Oh, I didn't realize I wrote this much. No, I, I did. Um, I got some minor news headlines that I followed up on while I was gone, because even though I was at someone else's house on vacation, I still kept up on the news about the industry, including some interesting things that have been coming out. Um, Typhoon Twister at Six Life St. Louis finally opens to the public three weeks later schedule of the proposed Memorial Day weekend opening, and promptly closed a few hours later due to a rider falling out of the tube, be likely because they weren't holding on to their handles. Uh, yeah. So, that's a rocky start. I think it was open a, a day or two prior to, like, season pass holders and membership owners, but this is the first public day, and closed because someone didn't follow instructions, likely. Uh, Great Wolf Lodge Gurney actually opened ahead of schedule. So, first bookers, private hosts, corporate sponsors, whatever they were, uh, they got the first thing on June 22nd, I believe, the headline on Great Wolf Lodge social media pages came on. Uh, including Chance the Rapper there, the opening thing. Not really like I care. Uh, I'm pretty sure that it's open to the public as of this past weekend. Uh, July 1st is its public opening, that they're still taking bookings. Uh, they're still quite good. I haven't checked GreatWolfLoop.com in a while, but I'm sure it'll say, like, hey, now open. Or it'll either say taking bookings or now open. And it looks good, though content and coverage in the place is pretty scarce on YouTube at the moment. So I guess people are still enjoying their stays. And another actually recent rumor is that Splashwater Falls, according to a user on some, on some forum, uh, Splashwater Falls at Six Flags Over Georgia is actually rumored to get the axe. It's on its way out. Which, if you don't know what Splashwater Falls is, it is a shoot-the-shoots type ride at Six Flags Over Georgia. And it, I think... If they're going to take it out, which, I mean, water rides are going quickly. They do also have a Thunder Rapids type of ride and a water park, like, on the site. And, of course, they still have their Thunder Rapids, so it's like your your River Rapids type of ride. So if this goes out, then I think there's enough room for either a free spin or a Raptor. Could Over Georgia be the next Raptor? Two arm season in a row. That would be, that'd be every park's dream. And, of course, the major development over the past few weeks has been Kennywood, the rumored uh, Intamin or Mac coaster, it seems like. They got some footers matching those. Uh, it's one, it'll likely be 197 feet tall, either have three launches or three inversions based on number three, and will likely have a capacity of 24 riders per train. So, And they are also semi-confirmed to hold Coaster Con 20, or 44, which... It's not really relevant to me. I just think that the little teaser they gave hints that they're hosting CoasterCon 44. And, of course, I will report on the new project for Kennywood when we have more conclusive evidence. I remember the last time I was at Great America before going, which was just a few days before I flew out, and I'm sure it's more even prevalent now, is that a, a somewhat large square or rectangular hole has been dug in the site of the Victorium closer to the Hurricane Harbor side. So close to the walkway where you enter Hurricane Harbor. This is either some sort of motor, electric thing, 
uh, or some sort of engine, or what is most likely a splashdown pool, a big pool of water, maybe four feet deep, uh, that basically tubes go into when a slide is done. It looks only big enough for one slide complex, so I think we may see something like Typhoon Twister come to Great America, uh, based on whatever little evidence I have. More on that development as I'll be at Six Lives Great America on Friday, June 30th, well, if I can secure a ride, uh, which, I mean, I don't doubt that I'd be able to go. It's going to be, I also got all, it's only like the only day this summer all my friends have been able to go, and to bring a friend. So, or, sorry, Friday 629. I keep forgetting that 630 is a Saturday. 629. And, of course, there's some other headlines that have been popping up that you probably know by now. Uh, some more things have been opening as well. I mean, we know that Crazy Coaster at Discovery Kingdom, Harley Quinn Crazy Coaster, has been delayed yet again. Still not open. I don't think Wahoo River at Six Flags America is open yet. Uh, Harley Quinn Spin Sanity is not opening until mid-July at over Texas. Uh, Six Lives is just having a big disaster with their openings. Um, Canada's Wonderland is, of course, having some major work done as a, on an underground portion of their likely dive coaster. Lots of other miniature headlines that have been following this past week. But these are some of the major ones that I found. Um, some, of the one, some of the ones apply more to my channel than others, like the Great Wolf Lodge Gurney and Great America Hurricane Harbor contact. But I think Splash Waterfalls is... A little interesting rumor that I think will lead to a possible Six Flags thing. If they if they will to get if they will get rid of it, it will likely be rid by next month, maybe the beginning of August, or maybe mid August, the very latest. So keep an eye out on that. We may see some construction going on in that area soon. So keep your eyes open. And with that, I think that will wrap up my video. So. This is one of the first little bonus segments I've done because, well, maybe I'll start doing this after every mini vacation, if especially since summer is the right time for teasers and coaster rumors, because we don't have enough to do already. So, if you guys have enjoyed the video, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscription. Uh, if you guys uh, can do any of those, if you guys enjoy the video, uh, just well, leave a like, comment, subscription. I don't know where I'm going with that. Sorry about that. Um, I hope you guys have a great insert unit of time here, and as